Most humans don't live in the water, but we sure love crossing it. For whatever reason, when the land runs out, we just keep on going. Rather than stay put and be content, we build ships and we set sail. And for shorter spans, well, we build bridges. Of course, Florida's scenic Highway 30A is famous for her many miles of white sand beaches, her quaint seaside villages, and for jaw-dropping sunsets across the Gulf of Mexico. But while it may be hard to take notice of much else amidst all of this stunning beauty, Scenic 30A is also home to some really beautiful bridges. Each bridge along Scenic 30A has a unique look and feel, often reflecting the character of the beach community it serves. They're functional, of course, helping us get from one place and one side to another. But our bridges are also inspiring. They inspire professional photographers. They inspire artists and painters. And they inspire young influencers in search of that surreal selfie. Here are a few of our favorite bridges that span 30A's rare coastal dune lakes, bayous, bays, and waterways. The Draper Lake Pedestrian Bridge that runs alongside Scenic 30A is one of the more unique bridges you'll traverse along the 19-mile Timpuchi Bike and Pedestrian Path. The original developer of the Draper Lake Coastal Community collaborated with Walton County officials to add character and architectural interest to this pedestrian bridge. The covered passageway and cedar shake roof make this one of the most picturesque spots to take in the natural beauty of a rare coastal dune lake. There's a second pedestrian bridge spanning Draper Lake within this private neighborhood, visible from the covered bridge. Certainly no stranger to Instagram, Watercolors Pedestrian Bridge connects Phase 1 and Phase 3 neighborhood developments. Spanning some 500 feet, the initial wetland crossing takes you over and through the native grasses and reeds that are found along this freshwater lake. At night, the bridge is illuminated with fiber optic fixtures designed to mimic the cattails that flank the bridge. Hand-blown glass orbs are mounted on stainless steel tubes which allow the fixtures to glow softly and wave gently in our coastal breeze. Once you're out beyond the wetlands and over the lake, the walking surface transitions to wood, where a cable railing system adorned with copper leaves makes for a uniquely visceral experience. Want to see the bridge from an entirely different perspective? Rent a kayak, paddleboard, or e-foil at the adjacent boathouse and just glide on underneath. County Road 30A was completed in 1960, including a small bridge that runs across Oyster Lake's outfall, which flows into the Gulf of Mexico. For many years, this bridge was supported by pilings, which allowed for a natural ebb and flow between lake and gulf but a culvert eventually replaced those pilings in 2014. It was intended to help restore more salinity to Oyster Lake. As far back as most locals can remember, lake residents traversed the outfall back and forth to and fro the gulf, passing right under the old bridge to reach the popular swimming hole and warmer, shallow, brackish waters of the lake. A road named Oyster Lake Causeway was built later across the eastern side of the lake, but the road was often flooded and unusable, so the road was eventually removed and replaced by a footbridge designed to help pedestrians reach the beach. Just north of Scenic Highway 30A in Alice Beach, the stark white Somerset Bridge hugs a man-made body of water named Lake Maryland. This hourglass-shaped lake was named after a heavenly figure, the famous Marilyn Monroe. Somerset Bridge features a sundial, and with a forest to the north and rows of stately white homes to the south, Somerset Bridge is the stuff of architectural dreams. One of this area's first bridges was a log board bridge that cost the slough Hogtown Bayou between 13th Street and County Road 393 North. Once a major steamboat landing, the old town of Santa Rosa became a major bay community in the early 1900s, 
It was home to some 850 to 1,200 people at its height. The original bridge connected locals to the post office, a hotel, and town warehouses that were in the area. Unfortunately, the old bridge was recently removed and, well, locals doubt it will ever be rebuilt. Almost certainly not to the same pioneering standards of charm. But, just around the corner, the Cessna Landing Bridge crosses Hogtown Bayou. There's a public park here, complete with a boat launch, fishing docks, picnic pavilions, and even some basketball hoops. It's named for Charles E. Cessna of Chicago, who began marketing and developing this land in the early 1900s as an agricultural town. While fishing isn't allowed from this bridge, locals in Walton County know it's one of the very best places to soak in a sunset. Spanning Camp Creek Lake, another one of 30A's coastal dune lakes, this signature pedestrian bridge is enclosed in the private Watersound Beach community, but it can still be seen in the distance from the road and the bike path. It's a perfect place for a paddle. The first bridge over Choctahatchee Bay was a drawbridge built in the 1930s. She withstood numerous major storms over the decades, and since it wasn't a very tall bridge, it even offered local fishermen the opportunity to cast from her ramparts. But in 1974, a tragic accident occurred when a renegade barge struck the drawbridge supports. A portion of the bridge collapsed, taking the operator's shack and the life of the operator, W.C. McCarter, with it. With no more bridge, a ferry was introduced to help transport vehicles across Choctahatchee Bay but each ferry could only hold six to eight cars, and if you missed it, well, you had to wait at least an hour for it to return. Eventually, the Clyde B. Wells Bridge replaced the ferry and the old drawbridge, and in 2017, a second 12,000-foot two-lane northbound bridge was added. Under this bridge, you'll find an excellent public park with a 400-foot fishing pier, boat ramps, and picnic pavilions with panoramic views. Western Lake is arguably the most photographed of 30A's many vistas, with tall, spindly splash pines serving as an iconic separator between southern skies and this expansive body of water. On a calm, good weather day, you'll see families crossing under the bridge by kayak, canoe, or YOLO board, all of which can be rented in nearby watercolor. If paddling isn't your thing, this is a great place to take your bike, ride across the water, and capture stunning views of our Gulf of Mexico sunsets. This all-wooden covered bridge welcomes residents and visitors alike to the quiet neighborhood sanctuary known as Nature Walk at Seagrove. While it's too new to pack much history, nonetheless, at the time of its construction, this was the longest drivable wooden bridge in the entire state of Florida. Just past the far east end of Scenic Highway 30A and Camp Helen State Park, Phillips Inlet Bridge connects Walton County with Bay County, Panama City, and beyond. Also known as Lake Powell Bridge, it was first constructed in 1934 as a toll bridge with the assistance of federal funds. Lake Powell is the largest coastal dune lake in the region, and it's popular with boaters and paddlers alike. The best place to view the bridge is from within Camp Helen State Park, which was once a retreat for employees of an Alabama paper mill. Last but not least on our list, Eastern Lake Bridge was one of the few bridges that actually existed before the construction of County Road 30A. Longtime local Bob Swinford recalls traveling across this bridge, or at least her predecessor, all the way back in 1938. How does he remember so specifically? Well, he was on his way to court his future bride, Mickey Wesley. Mickey was the ninth and youngest child of William and Katie Wesley. Their home was known as the Wesley House, built in 1897 in nearby Point Washington. Today, the Wesley House is the historic centerpiece of Eden Garden State Park. A young man needs to cross a lake so he can court his future bride? Sounds like a perfectly good reason to build a bridge to me. <laughs>